Today we're gonna be taking a look at the Air Jordan 1 Low OG from the Dornbecker collection. And I always love talking about these sneakers every year because the Dornbecker Foundation is here in Portland. And to see their collaboration with Nike every time and all the creative ways that they use to fundraise money for the kids and give them opportunities to express themselves is always such a blessing. Oh yeah, and if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA show. Hey! So first things first, we need to crack open this box and see what this shoe is talking about. Starting with the outside of the box, you have your classic Dornbrecker freestyle branding. They've been doing this on the boxes for the past few years now. The boxes used to be very similar to the actual boxes that came with the shoes and those models. But now we're starting to see this box more and more each year as the releases come out. So starting with the lid right here, you have the Dornbrecker with the freestyle and the Nike swoosh just below that. On the side of the box right here, you have the same exact branding, just smaller. On the other side of the box, there's nothing right there. And then on the back end, you have your Dornbecker branding on the top of the lid as well and that's also on the front of the lid now reading that size tag it says Air Jordan 1 low OG DB 18 for the season that it is and then gorge green court purple white size 13 just for me now cracking open the lid of the box right here you have the different information about each child that had the opportunity to design their shoe so if you were to see the other models from this collection you would see the same thing on their lids for this particular shoe Riddy had the opportunity to design these she was 15 years old and she has cystic fibrosis there's more details on the lid right here but we have a special video that we will be rolling in a second that'll give you guys a lot more info about the shoe and how the design was inspired now moving the lid right here you have your freestyle sticker that typically is stuck onto the paper like this but they started to do this beside it that way you could actually use the sticker for something else and then on the paper you have the all over silver print right here with the Dornbecker and the freestyle and the Nike and then peeling back the paper right here you got the shoe oh you got the shoe okay first impressions of this sneaker honestly these go crazy. Now, before we start breaking down all the styles, cuts, and materials, and doing the comparison between the original Dornbecker Air Jordan 1 High, we gotta talk about the history first. So, like I said earlier, Dornbecker Children's Hospital is based here in Portland, Oregon. Also, as we know, the Nike headquarters is here as well, which caused them to do collaborations and opportunities for kids to design their own shoes. And each and every year, they do a set of different sneakers with different models, colors, materials, and one special thing, a story behind every shoe representing each kid each year. Also with that, they do one pair of Air Jordan retros in that collection as well. So we've seen Air Jordans 1 through 15. They missed the 11s. I don't know if they're going to ever do the 11s, but this is actually the third pair of Air Jordan 1s. Like I said, we had the Dornbecker ones that originally dropped Mr. Boopers, Tony, shout out to my guy. We went to high school together. And then we had the What the Dornbecker ones, which was a compilation of multiple Dornbecker Jordan collaborations into one single pair of shoes, which is now worth like I don't know, $80,000 or something crazy like that. And then you have this version right here, the low top, the first ever low OG actually, to now come out and hit the streets with the story behind it. So it's definitely dope to see that they brought the Air Jordan 1 low OG around. And again, I'm very interested to see if they're ever gonna do a Jordan 11. So now besides all that, let's go ahead and roll the footage of Riddy telling her story because I know she can do it way better than I can. I am Riddy and I'm 15 years old. I really like um, music, like playing the ukulele, singing along, and I like tennis, basketball, swimming, taekwondo, and arts and crafts like crocheting, knitting, sewing. We're really super proud of her. The first word that comes to mind when I think of family is just love, because I think it's our love for each other that just keeps us together and um, allows us to just support each other in the best way. Riddhi was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis uh, when she was one and a half years old. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease which is progressive. Cystic fibrosis does affect her lungs and um, her pancreas, liver, everything got affected because of that. The initial reaction, obviously, uh, life expectancy, 37, um, that would break anybody's heart, uh, let alone if it's your own child. There's always a fear, there's always anxiety, fear of unknown. If anybody can handle this as a family, we can handle it. She has to do a lot of breathing treatments, several hours a day, take a lot of different medications. She does regular clinic visits, sees a whole assortment of specialists. It's brutal and it's not predictable. Mainly it started with allergies. We then found out that I had a mold in my lungs and my sinuses that I was allergic to. I think it got pretty tough after I started the steroid course. 
she got steroid induced diabetes. And so I had to start taking insulin. She's like, oh, now this is going to be a part of my life too. That broke my heart. She just stepped up. She's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do this. I have managed uh, my disease so far. I'm going to uh, manage this too. I have such a good support system with my family. Not every experience in life is enjoyable, but every experience in life is valuable. I never get stressed out about going to clinic visits, even if I'm really sick. I know that they're gonna make me, they're gonna assure me that I'm gonna be better, and I know that they're gonna take care of me. I just made sure to keep that in mind, and that's how I got through it. I was very, very, very excited when I found out that I was selected for freestyle. It was a platform for her where she could express herself in a way that was more about who she was, not just her disease or diagnosis. I designed the Nike Air Jordan 1 Lows. I have the message radiate positivity on the side and then um, on the front I have it saying brand new day. So the crew neck is this lime green color. The hat is like a colorful, almost pinwheel style design. I felt really included and um, all my ideas were valued. So after seeing that video, I'm sure a lot of you now are having a whole different mindset behind this sneaker and why it means so much compared to just being another shoe that comes out like every other retro. And that's why I'm always so excited to add these unique sneakers to my collection because I think it's so dope how they do this every year. But either way, I know you guys are ready for all the detailed shots. So let's go ahead and start breaking these things down. Starting with the bottom of the foot, you have your classic Air Jordan 1 outsole, but it's a translucent and it's a purple right here. And then you have her name just behind that. And you got the flowers just above that for each eye on her name. Now going up to the midsole, instead of having that pure white midsole, you got a sail kind of colored right here with the sail stitch as well. And then onto the upper, as you can see, a lot of unique details and a lot of great storytelling aspects. So like we saw in the video, she kind of explained some of the details and what they mean to her and why they decided to choose those design elements. But I just want to highlight them real quick and give you guys a couple more detail shots as we go. So starting with the front of the foot, similar to the tennis court right here, you got that green suede around the toe area and then a lighter green on the inside at the top. This is also going to be a suede as well and then you have brand new day wrapping around the front of the toe right here and i think that's super dope how she took that quote and used that how she puts it into her everyday life and was able to put that onto the shoe because when you have that shoe and you're looking at the toe down and you see that it can kind of give you a reminder as well hey every day is a brand new day take advantage of it and do the best that you can each and every day you have radiate positivity right here two different fronts on the side of the foot. Now this is gonna be on the outside of the foot. On the inside, it's gonna be just that white within the translucent purple swoosh. Also have the translucent purple swoosh right here on the outside of the foot. And then you got that kind of turf grass area around the eyelids on the front end right here with this material. I like how they added that element to the sneaker to help it tell the story a little bit better. Now going to the back end of the shoe right here, like I said with the flower, we saw that branding. And then on this light green suede, kind of more minty, you're gonna have that right here that matches the toe box. And that's also similar to the sock liner on the inside and then you have that same turf grass on the back end with the purple Air Jordan wings logo on the back end right here now one thing that I can definitely say is I was so happy they decided to do a retro low OG compared to a retro low because when it comes to low OGs the cut on the sneaker is just so much better and it just looks so clean on this shoe especially with all these iridescent edges throughout the entire shoe from the top the bottom the middle of the back even on the toe box right here it just looks super clean from the top down like I said earlier I think they did a really good job mixing these colors with this palette and actually putting it all together and tying it with a good set of color blocking as well. Now these come equipped with a pair of standard flat laces but you have a major twist on them right here. You have the sunrise element to the sneaker right here so you can see that as it goes from the front to the back end of the shoe and then you actually have a sunrise right here on the tongue and then the Nike Air on the right side right here with the turquoise blue. You also have an additional set of turquoise laces and it has like more of a dark navy kind of purple type tip to those laces as well i think that would look really good with this sneaker kind of make things pop a little bit more especially matching with some of the other elements on the shoe definitely a nice touch but i really like these sunset laces so for me i would probably rock them with these in there instead now looking at the insoles right here you have that super dope element with the water right here she really loves going to the beach being by the ocean being by the water one with the earth it makes a lot of sense and i think that was another dope element with having the grass and the sun and the water and all the natural things you would see through the beautiful day i think that's super dope how they added this 
element and kind of walking on water as well at the same time with the insole. So I definitely think this was a nice touch. Now those are pretty much all the details when it comes to this sneaker. I love how they tied all the different elements in and her love for Serena Williams and how salt water played a factor with her medication with everyday use and having a better day, just all the things. I love it. I think they did a really good job. Now I wanted to bring these side by side with the high top right here from back in the day and just show you guys some of the differences. Obviously the shoes are way different, but it's just crazy to see uh, from the overall aspect of the sneaker. But if you look at this box right here, it's actually kind of funny because like I said, this box is what the shoes just naturally came in back in the day. I don't remember when this release was. I want to say it was like 08 or something like that. But they had a Dornbecker, kind of like a retro card that you got with all the different kids that had a design. And then we actually ended up printing out a piece of paper and it had the whole article right here. And now you look at current time and they actually put that onto the box and made it a lot easier for the consumer to have a little bit of understanding of the storytelling and everything like that compared to just purchasing a sneaker and not knowing more about the kid and the story behind it. So it's crazy to see how it has evolved you know, so much over the years and how they've done with different branding in the box and all the other stuff. And then how this collection is still going. I love to see that. I'm so excited about that. And I'm looking forward to seeing all the other retros that come out in the future. And I'm sure there's some anniversary stuff that's gonna be coming. We've seen retros drop again. Dornbecker 3s came out again. Dornbecker 6s retro again. There might be some other stuff that might retro again. I'm not sure. I know everybody wants to see the Dornbecker 4. I'm sure everybody's gonna be raving in the comment section. That's probably the most demanded Dornbecker shoe that they wanna see come out again. And I could definitely understand because there's people in the shoe game that are, you know, current time that didn't know about the Dornbecker collection and they like it and they want to support it and they want to go get those sneakers and now next thing you know every one of them shoes is a thousand plus dollars because they didn't make that many pairs kind of hard to get and we definitely see over time that's something that naturally causes these shoes to go up in value which again there's like this whole other moral thing behind like selling these sneakers and then not taking the money and donating it to the hospital and all the other stuff so me in particular I gotta always get these for retail from the drop. Like if I can't get it from there, I usually just kind of pass on it unless I get it for like some crazy good deal or something because I want the money to go to the foundation and all those things. But that's just kind of how I believe it on this particular set of releases because we know there's such a huge impact on it behind it compared to just buying another pair of retros. But again, Everybody do what you want to do. I get it. <laughs> I can't control everybody's decisions. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. I appreciate you guys as always. I'll have the link down below in the description if you guys want to make any more donations or learn any more stories about the kids or any other stuff that has going on with the hospital. Everything will be info down there for you guys. I'll see you guys in another one. If you want to see any other videos like this, I got you. I would never let you down. Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there. Hey, the only choice I like to make what I'm aware of. I would never let you down, it's in my DNA The only choice I like to make what I'm aware today I was made for it, it's in the DNA